Um, basically, we're just going to do a really quick review of ratios. You guys know what they are. And then we're going to talk about proportions, which you guys all also know what those are. But we're going to talk about maybe. So now we're going to talk about what a proportion is. And I, I think you guys know this as well. A proportion is basically saying that two ratios are equivalent. Um, in this first example, I have three-fifths is equal to six-tenths. Well, you can say that they're equivalent. Um, one reason, because you can simplify six-tenths into three fifths, and because those two are equivalent, you know, three-fifths is equal to three-fifths, that means it's proportional. Um, the other way you could do it on this second example is you can go by scale factor. You know that three times three is equal to nine, and if five times three is equal to 15, then you're saying that they're proportional as well, because the ratios are equivalent. Now, when you have an example like this that has a missing number, this is when you can use your cross products in order to um, figure this out. So what you would do is you would do cross products of 3 times x, so that is 3x, and 5 times 27, which is 135. So then you end up with 3x is equal to 135, and then you just solve your equation. So divided by 3 here, divided by 3 here, and that means x is equal to 45. Okay, and then if you plug that back in, if this is 45, let's say I do 3 fifths is equal to 27 over 45, you know that 3 times 9 is 27, and therefore 5 times 9 is 45. Okay, so basic just solving proportions. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this. This says the measures of three angles of a triangle have a ratio of 2 to 2 to 5. I'm sorry, 2 to 2 to 5. Find each angle measure. So we know that every angle added together, so if we've got the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 has to be equal to 180, right, because that's our um, angle sum postulate of a triangle. So all we're going to do is we're going to substitute in the measure of angle 1, the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 3. Okay, so we know that 2x is the measure of angle 1 because the ratio is 2. 2x is the measure of angle 2 because the ratio is 2. And 5x is the measure of angle 5, I'm sorry, angle 3 because that's the ratio. And we do that. Um, we add those two together. We get 2x plus 2x plus 5x is 9x is equivalent to 180. Then we solve by dividing each side by 9, and we get x is equal to 20. And we substitute back in to find each angle measure. So 2 times x is 40, 2 times x again is 40, and 5 times x is 100. So therefore, our three angle measures are 40 degrees, 40 degrees, and 100. And we also can see that 40 plus 40 plus 100 equals 180. So we know that that's correct. Okay, so whenever you see a problem like that, just remember that your ratio here is just going to be multiplied by the variable. Okay, so now let's talk about something called means and extremes. Whenever you have a proportion, it looks like this. It's got the um, A over B is equivalent to C over D. Okay, so basically what this means, to use that word again, is this Sorry, these right here are your extremes, and this right here are your means. And really, all this says is that the product of your extremes, so A times D, has to be equivalent to the product of your means, which is B times C. You know, cross multiplication is all it's talking about. Whenever you have a proportion, if your cross products are equivalent, it's going to be proportional. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about um, how we can set up our proportions. So we have this first set of equivalent pr proportions. I have A over B is equal to C over D. And if I do my cross products, right, that means that A times D is equal to times C is what I have here. 
Now you can switch those proportions around. We can flip the A and the B as long as we flip the C and the D as well. So all I've done here is I've just put my B on top, my A on the bottom, and then I also flip the other side, my D on top and my C on the bottom. But if you notice, my products are the same. I still have B times C is equal to A times D. And by the commutative property, I can say them differently, but these two things are still equivalent. Okay, now I can also flip it another way. Here I've taken um, my B and my C and I flipped them. So now I have A is to C is the same as B is to D. But my cross products still remain the same. I still have A times D is equal to B times C. So these three are still equivalent. They just look a little bit different. Okay, and then on my fourth one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the order of my A and my C and my B and my D. Okay, so all I did was flip-flop this. My A and my C flipped over here, and then my B and my D flip-flopped over here. So that gives me C times B is equal to A times D. So for all four of these, the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means because basically one of that, what I ended up with was A times D is equivalent to B times C for all four of them. And that's just something you guys learned in sixth grade um, basically is that your proportion can be set up four different ways as long as your cross products are equivalent. And what that means is that I could set up something differently than you and as long as our cross products are equivalent, we both set them up correctly. All right, so let's talk about something else about proportions. And this is something that I just learned that I thought was pretty cool. So basically what it says is that if you have three fractions, three ratios that are equivalent to each other, so basically saying if A over B is equal to C over D is equal to E over F, then that means that the sum of A plus C plus E divided by the sum of B plus D plus F is equal to A over B, which means that you can basically simplify this amount back down to where you started. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and test that out. The easiest way to do it would be three equivalent ratios. So one half is equal to two fourths, which is also equal to, let's do uh, seven fourteenths, right? These are all equal to one half. So let's test our then statement. So that means that 1 plus 2 plus 7 divided by 2 plus 4 plus 14. So 7 plus 2 plus 1 is 10. And 6 plus 14 is 20. And 10 over 10, 20 simplifies to 1 half. So it's true, 1 half is equal to one half. So um, if you want to try a couple and see if it works, you could do a string of four equivalent um, ratios or you could do a string of eight equivalent ratios as long as they're all equivalent to each other. If you add all of the numerators together and divide it by all the numerators, you'll come back to the simplest form of those ratios. I thought that was... So we're going to start with doing our cross products. So this is three times the quantity, three x plus three, which if we use the distributive property that becomes three x plus 9, and then we do 2 times the quantity, 2x minus 1, which again, using the distributive property, is 4x minus 2, okay? Then we go ahead and solve our equation for x, so minus 3x on this side. That gives us 9 equals x minus 2, and if we add 2 to each side, we end up with x is equal to 11. Okay, and we can go back in and substitute it in. So we have 11 plus 3 over 2 is equal to 22 minus 1 over 3. So this equals 14 over 2. This equals 21 over 3. And 14 over 2 is equal to 7. 21 over 3 is equal to 7. So we see that, that one is correct. Okay? Alright. Okay, 
here's our next example. This one's a little bit different because we are doing, um, going to have a quadratic here. So first one is going to be the x minus 1 times the quantity 3x minus 2. Let's go ahead and do this one over here. So we have x minus 1 multiplied by 3x minus 2. Okay, and if we're multiplying our quadratics, we have x times 3x is 3x squared. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. And then um, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Okay, this is just practice by multiplying um, two binomials together. And the other side is going to be x times the quantity x plus 2. So that's 10x plus 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify. We've got 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 10x plus 20. Okay, now remember, if we have a, a square, we know that we need to, um, a quadratic, we know we need to set equal to 0 and factor. So that means we need to move everything that's over here onto the other side. So that would give us 3x squared minus 15x um, minus 18 equals 0. Okay, so now we're going to factor that out. Now, before we start doing it, you also see that each of these shares a factor of 3. So we can divide out a 3 here, a 3 here, and a 3 here. And we'll continue this up here. So that gives me x squared minus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. So now when we factor this, we get x squared. And what multiplied together gives me negative 6, but added together, together gives me um, negative 5. That would be 6 and 1, so we would have negative 6x plus x minus 6 equals 0. Then on this side, we factor out an x, x minus 6. And this one, we would factor out a 1, x minus 6. So that means x plus 1 times x minus 6 equals 0. So if we set each of those equal to 0, we know that x has to be equal to negative 1 or positive 6. So again, this is just a lesson in factoring. Okay. Um, so basically, we're just using our basic skills of setting up and solving proportions to um, set up and solve it that way. All right, so one more example. This is a word problem. It says a twin jet engine has a length of 78 meters and a wingspan of 90 meters. A toy model is made in proportion to the real airplane. If the wingspan of the toy is 36 centimeters, find the length of the toy. So first thing you want to make sure you do is that you're setting up your word proportion correctly. So basically what we're doing is we're comparing the plane's length to the model's length and then the plane's wingspan to the model's wingspan. Make sure that you're always comparing the same things. So that gives us 78 because that's the length of the airplane um, and X because we're trying to find the length of the toy. And then we have 90 over 36 because the 90 is the wingspan and the 36 is the wingspan of the toy. Okay, we do that by substitution. So our next step is going to be cross products, which means uh, 78 times 36 and 90 times X is what we get that. Then that gives us 2,808 equals 90x because we multiplied them together. And then we're going to divide each side by 90, and we get 31.2 equals x. That means the length of the model is 31.2 centimeters.